Kimmy, are you still trying to train that model on your local machine? It's been running for three days. My watch has more processing power. It's a perfectly good machine, Peter. It just needs some optimization. Besides, I like to feel the model. You just don't have an appreciation for the fundamentals. Fundamentals? Timmy, the fundamental principle of modern AI is efficiency. You're wasting more electricity than a small country right now. I deployed the same model on a serverless architecture in about an hour. Scalable, cost-effective, you know, things companies actually care about. The only thing I'm wrestling with is whether to take a nap while my model trains in the cloud. Meanwhile, you're probably going to be here until the next ice age. Did you even remember to set up proper tracking? What if your model training crashes halfway through? It won't crash, uh, I think. And logging? I have a text file somewhere. If you've been building projects, grinding tutorials, but still aren't satisfied with the results, you're in the right place because I was there too. I was building countless projects, applying to positions, but getting rejected until I changed my approach. That's when I was able to land an internship at Amazon, paying over $80 an hour. And the day I graduated, they gave me a new grad offer paying over $200,000 a year. I've also taught the same approach to thousands of students over the world and helped them land their dream internship and job offer. This video is a no BS series of steps that you need to follow to land your dream internship and job offer. And no, this isn't going to be about adding random projects to your GitHub account. This is going to be about something very, very different. First, we'll go over why the spray and pray approach just doesn't work anymore. Next, we'll go over the two types of projects that you need to focus on. Third, we'll break down the essential math for AI, and it's less than you think. Next, we'll go over what I call the elite engineer essentials, the fundamental concepts that every engineer needs to master. And finally, we'll go over the portfolio powerhouse framework. So make the video full screen because this is going to be a very detailed video. You don't want to do what 99% of students are doing. Instead, follow this exact strategy that thousands of students across the world have used to land their dream offers. Most beginners are stuck in tutorial hell, following instructions, copying code, and hoping for the best. They're building handwritten digit detectors, basic chatbots, cat versus dog classifiers, projects that just don't cut it anymore. And again, those are good for learning the basics, but they're not going to get you those sweet, sweet offers. Because if your GitHub looks like everyone else's, you're completely invisible to recruiters and hiring managers. The way to escape this trap is to go deep. Do what 99% of students are not willing to do. You, my friend, are different, and I know that you're committed to deep understanding and problem-solving ability. And there are two project types that showcase this. Let's get into them. Think of this like rebuilding an AI architecture from the ground up. Researchers at companies like OpenAI, Google, Facebook, NVIDIA, they actually publish research papers with their findings. I want you to read this paper, make sense of the ideas, and convert it into Python code. That's what this project is all about. This allows you to appreciate the trade-offs and understand the researcher thinking. This is next level understanding. And don't worry, this project is still totally manageable. The way to do that is to not jump into the latest cutting edge paper from Google or OpenAI. Instead, start with some foundational papers that are accessible and easier to read. Later in the video, I'll give you a few papers that are a great starting point. And remember, the goal is not perfect replication. We're not trying to match every single decimal point that the researchers achieved in their accuracy. We're looking to understand the main ideas and code up the main components. Trust me, this project will teach you more than five or 10 surface level projects. This one is much more practical. We're going to take a general model, which is still pretty smart, but specialize it even further. Let's say we took a PhD student, already pretty smart, but then trained them to be a very specialized heart surgeon. That's what fine tuning is like. And there's two reasons why this project matters so much. First, companies want their own internal LLM, right? That's every company's dream. An LLM that can answer internal company questions and make the business as a whole so much more efficient. 
quote. That's why it's ultimately such a marketable skill right now. And companies are willing to pay quarter million dollar salaries to people who understand the ins and outs of this skill. I recommend exploring models like GPT-2, one of the earlier versions of ChatGPT, the Mistral model, and the Llama model from Meta. These are all open source LLMs. This project is truly full stack. You'll get into data pre-processing, hyperparameter tuning, evaluation metrics, deployment considerations, everything. That's why it's such an amazing project. The one thing you need to consider before you jump into the project is to choose a data set that matches your passion. This could be education, this could be finance and the stock market. Pick a specialization, pick a data set and get coding. Okay, math overwhelms a lot of AI beginners, but the truth is you don't need a PhD in mathematics. It's like driving a car. You don't need to know the internal combustion engine physics. You just need to know how to use the pedals and how to steer the vehicle. It's the same here when it comes to building projects. Matrix multiplication, this is how data flows through AI models, and basic derivatives from calculus, this is how models are trained. And no crazy derivatives that take up a whole page, just basic functions like x squared and e to the x, be able to find the derivative of those. If you've got those two math concepts down, you're good to start building projects. I even talked to 3Blue1Brown or Grant Sanderson about this, and he agreed. You can learn the math as it comes up. You don't need to dive into a whole semester long probability theory course before you jump into AI. The math will honestly come naturally to you as you start to build projects and everything will feel way more intuitive. Okay, before you dive into research papers, before you dive into fine tuning, there are three core concepts, which I call the elite engineer essentials. The first is gradient descent. The name is a bit weird, but this is the main algorithm behind training AI models. It's the optimization engine. This is how we improve the accuracy of a model over many iterations of training. You're gonna wanna understand this algorithm and the good news is it's not too bad. Second, linear regression. It's a pretty simple statistical model, but you still wanna have a very good understanding of it before jumping into neural networks and transformers. It's actually the foundation of all of modern AI. Just that simple equation, y equals mx plus b. And third, feed forward neural networks. These are the simplest kind of neural network. And once you understand these, everything becomes so much easier. Those are the elite engineer essentials. And as a bonus, if you want a truly deep understanding, try to implement these three concepts from scratch in Python instead of just knowing their definitions. That's what's going to make you a truly elite engineer. All right, once you've got those essentials down, it's time to jump into PyTorch. Forget TensorFlow. PyTorch is becoming the standard in industry and research. It's way more flexible and intuitive than any other framework, so mastering it will truly give you an edge. And once you're familiar with PyTorch, that's when you can really start to implement papers. It's the best framework to implement the concepts from a paper. The main reason I'm such a big proponent of PyTorch is because it's the perfect balance between abstracting all of the math away and just calling high level APIs, importing OpenAI. And on the other end of the spectrum, doing everything from scratch, spending hours deriving equations. We don't wanna do that either. We want something in the middle. We wanna depend on some functions that PyTorch provides, but we still wanna understand the concepts, right? That's the perfect medium, the happy balance. And that's exactly what PyTorch provides. When you write code in PyTorch, it forces you to still understand the underlying concepts. It doesn't just give everything to you. It doesn't hide hide away all the math. All right, lastly, the portfolio powerhouse. We know degrees just don't cut it anymore. Your portfolio is your proof. As a summary, I wanna give you a blueprint to building a killer portfolio and ultimately landing those sweet, sweet offers. First, prioritize the two project types we talked about earlier, paper implementations and fine tuning. One of them is more theoretical and one of them is more practical. Next, write a detailed documentation of your experience building the project. Don't just link the code on your resume. Explain the problem, the approach you took, challenges you faced, and of course your results. Have a public GitHub account with clean code, comments, and structure, so it's super easy for a recruiter or hiring manager to take a quick look at it. And as an extra bonus, you can even create a brief video of yourself explaining each of your projects on your GitHub profile. Recruiters love that sort of thing. 
All right, if you'd like to speed up this entire process, then I wanna invite you to our AI Engineering Accelerator. It's linked in the description and we've helped thousands of students land their dream offer in AI engineering. We even have a full money back guarantee. I've never seen anything like this before. You can read about it at the link in the description. And if you're looking for another video to watch, check out this one where I go over some actual research papers. These are beginner friendly papers. So even if you don't have a ton of experience, they'll still be pretty easy to understand. Understand. Hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one.